world, we wouldn't need fighter jets at all. But in a perfect budgetary world, we'd be able to field strictly the most advanced stealth fighters in the world and nothing else. But we don't live in either of those worlds, and in order to meet the defense obligations the Air Force has to this nation, it needs more fighters than it can afford to operate F-35s, and as a result, F-15EXs are being purchased to replace dated F-15Cs and Ds that at one time were going to be replaced by F-22s. But it's not always this question of simple arithmetic that ultimately puts a fighter into production or not. Sometimes fighter programs don't survive because the Defense Department doesn't have faith in the contractor to deliver on what they promise, or because the capabilities offered by the aircraft aren't ones the nation has a pressing need for at the time. But for whatever reason, these are the fighters that didn't make it into production. But if they had, they would have offered some incredible and often unique capabilities. Up first is the F-16XL. Back in 1977, about three years after the first F-16 took flight, and one year before it would enter service, its designer began working on what would come to be called the F-16 Supersonic Cruise and Maneuver Prototype, or SCAMP. The effort wasn't about fielding another production fighter. General Dynamics had no intention of trying to sell SCAMP once it was complete. Instead, the whole premise behind the program was to quickly and cheaply field a platform they could use to test the concept behind behind super cruising. Now super cruising or supersonic cruising is just the ability to maintain super a pretty thorough revamp. First, the wings were modified to incorporate a cranked aero delta shape, and that added 25% more lift. Working in conjunction with NASA and using the company's own funds, engineer Harry Hilliker, the same man responsible for the original design, kept experimenting with slight variations on the wings until they came to one they really liked that they dubbed the Model 400. This new wing design saw a 50 degree angle near the root of the wing for supersonic performance and a 70 degree angle where the wings extended for subsonic handling. And it offered more than double the surface area of the F-16's original wings. Tests went so well for the F-16 scamp that the Air Force got interested and provided them with two early F-16A airframes to modify into what they dubbed the F-16XL. And with the massive wings now fully realized, it gave the F-16XL nearly double the fuel capacity of the original F-16, with a great deal of additional lift thanks to 633 square feet of underwing space, which they then leveraged for an astonishing 27 hard points. 